We're talking about utilizing black pepper in your cooking or a piperine supplement to improve autophagy. Autophagy is cellular cleanup. It's cellular recycling. It's what happens when you have old decrepit components of cells that need to be recycled to ultimately fuel the healthier cells. It's survival of the fittest literally at a cellular level. When you look at content online surrounding longevity and lifespan, any honest content is going to link back to exercise and nutrition. Those are the two key pieces, particularly exercise. But there are other things that can potentially improve longevity without exercise. And without being cheeky and without being gimmicky, let's talk about them. So the first one is one that is pretty commonly used as a supplement to improve like heart health. And it's talked about in that world but it's not really talked about from a longevity perspective. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a supplement and it's coenzyme Q10. And I wanna give you some literature as to why it's so powerful because it's not just about increasing lifespan, it's about increasing quality of life. Now, coenzyme Q10 is important for cell function and also for reducing oxidative stress. We'll talk about it mainly from the energetic side. Basically, it allows electrons that are received from the food that you eat to more efficiently be turned into energy. That's the simplest way to kind of explain it. So the study that I want to reference was published in the journal Nutrition, Health, and Aging. Took a look at elderly people and it had them consume either selenium, coenzyme Q10, or a placebo and then monitored them for four years. So they looked at their quality of life and they looked at number of hospital visits. The group that took coenzyme Q10 had significantly less time spent in a hospital and they also had significant higher quality of life. So they had less reductions in quality of life, less reductions in cognitive function, and less reduction in physical competency. So they overall were just healthier people with a better quality of life. So how it works is when you eat food, you're going to take electrons from the food that you eat. It's energy, right? And those electrons go into your mitochondria and they pass through this gradient. Now, in simple terms, they basically drop and create a little explosion each time they drop. That little explosion gets harnessed into energy. In a lot of ways, it's like an internal combustion engine. But coenzyme Q10 makes it so that when the electron drops, it's able to be caught on something a little bit bigger. Because if that electron doesn't land on the ground, it can bounce and it can go rogue and it can actually decrease your quality of life. So it increases the efficiency in which you use energy, which is exactly what we want, especially as we get older. The next one is another supplement and it's NMN. Most of the data with nicotinamide mononucleotide is in mice. However, now we're starting to see some interesting human research as well. So the first study I want to reference is a rodent model study, just to get the context out there. So this study was published in Cell Metabolism. It took a look at healthy mice, and they found that when they gave healthy mice NMN, it prevented the age-related physiological decline. That is fancy jargon for it decreased the physical effects of aging. It prevented them from aging physically as much as or more so than mice that were not taking the NMN. Now, additionally, they found that it increased their physical activity. It increased their insulin sensitivity. It prevented age-related weight gain, and it improved their cholesterol and lipid profiles. So why is this happening? Like, what is so interesting about NMN? Well, Basically, NMN also allows you to have more cellular energy. After this video, I put a link down below for seed probiotic. I don't always take probiotics because a lot of them out there are complete garbage, but seed puts their money where their mouth is. They utilize a capsule inside of a capsule technology, which has a multi-stage delivery. So you're getting a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. If you crack the capsule open, there's literally another capsule inside. So really cool technology. And when you're talking about the world of longevity, well, gut health does matter. It's one of the biggest pieces when we're talking about inflammatory responses and we're talking about, of course, digestion. Again, if you're making any change to your diet this year, one of the first things you want to do in addition to that is change your probiotic or change your gut microbiome a little bit so that your body can actually start making those changes internally. So that link down below, we have this thing in our body called NAD and it's somewhat of a finite resource. NAD is so important to human function that if we did not have it, we would be dead within 15 seconds. So as we get older, our stores of NAD decline. NMN is a precursor to NAD. So when we supplement with NMN, in theory, you're creating more available NAD, 
more available energy to not only literally give you energy, but also conduct other things. So think about having sort of an extra set of hands. It's like having an assistant. You now have extra energy that can go activate other things and do other things that are good for longevity. But now there's a human clinical that was pretty interesting with NMN. This was published in the journal Science and it took a look at pre-diabetic people and put them on NMN for 10 weeks. What they found is that NMN increased insulin sensitivity within the muscles of these humans. This is very important for metabolic health as we get older. What does that have to do with longevity? All roads lead back to the mitochondria. So if our muscle cells are unhealthy as we get older and we're not insulin sensitive, then our mitochondria start to suffer. And mitochondria is where we manufacture energy so that our energy declines and we become frail, we become weak, and we eventually metabolically kind of die. So if we can preserve that a little bit by increasing insulin sensitivity, we improve once again the energy. It all comes down to maintaining that energy as we get older. This next one is woo-woo witch doctory, which I love because people love to hear this stuff and totally rain on the parade of it. We're talking about ginger. There's something in ginger called six gingerol. Now, most of the literature on ginger is going to be in mice and fruit flies. Drosophila. Okay, now they do this because it's easier to conduct a little bit more in vitro or longer term lifespan studies. But what they found is that when they treated fruit flies with 6-gingerol, it increased their levels of superoxide dismutase and catalase, which are two of the most important endogenous antioxidants in the body. If you take a vitamin C pill, that's an antioxidant. If you go and you get an infusion of glutathione, that's an antioxidant. But something like superoxide dismutase or catalase inside your body, that is your body's own ability to produce its antioxidants, which is significantly more powerful than any antioxidant supplement you could ever eat or take in because it knows your body and it is created in your body for your body. So ginger seems to be a simple way to potentially activate these antioxidants, which may improve lifespan in humans based on the early data we're seeing in fruit flies. The next one is one that's really interesting because we have heard of piperine or black pepper as something that's beneficial to take along with turmeric. Everyone's kind of heard that. Okay, you take turmeric, it can increase the bioavailability of curcumin by 2000% because it slows the liver breakdown. That's all great. But we're talking about utilizing black pepper in your cooking or a piperine supplement to improve autophagy. Autophagy is cellular cleanup. It's cellular recycling. It's what happens when you have old, decrepit components of cells that need to be recycled to ultimately fuel the healthier cells. It's survival of the fittest, literally at a cellular level. So this study was published in OncoTarget. And again, it's a rodent model study, so I have to be honest with you there, but it's still very interesting. So in OncoTarget, they published that these mice that were induced with neurotoxicity. So basically they induced neurotoxicity in these mice. They found that when they gave them piperine, black pepper extract, it prevented the neurotoxic effects from affecting the motor ability of these mice. Neurotoxicity is serious. That would give you tremors, that would loss of motor function, but piperine seemed to block the neurotoxicity. But additionally, when they looked further, they found that this increased autophagy in these mice as well. The way that it induced autophagy was by inhibiting something called mTOR X1. If you look at a lot of the longevity research, some people will tell you, oh, you should reduce protein intake because protein spikes mTOR. First of all, although that sounds like a valid argument on the surface, protein is much deeper than that. So I want to put that aside. Protein is important. But the argument on mTOR actually makes sense. The more we spike mTOR all the time, the more potential for DNA mutation and cellular damage we potentially have. So autophagy is the opposite of mTOR. So it seems as though black pepper attenuates mTOR a little bit and allows autophagy to come up. This is extra important as you get older. That doesn't mean you eat black pepper all the time and always induce autophagy. A little bit of mTOR and building muscle is obviously very good. But in this particular case, adding black pepper to your food or adding a piperine supplement or taking curcumin with piperine or black pepper could be very interesting in terms of what it does for your cellular cleanup. Now, this next piece is more about timing. This is really interesting. Those of you that watch my channel, you might know where I'm going with this. However, there's some new literature with it on meal timing and looking at a specific region of Italy called Abruzzo, Italy. Now in Abruzzo, they have a significantly long lifespan. Lots of centenarians and a ton of people 
in their 90s. So this study was published in Frontiers in Nutrition because they were really interested. Like, what are these people doing that's so interesting with their diet? Their diet isn't a whole lot different from other Mediterranean regions. High amounts of fish, high amounts of uh, good quality dairy, good amounts of fruits and vegetables, high fiber, moderate protein, olive oil, you name it. But what was really interesting about Abruzzo is they saw that they didn't eat later than about 7 p.m. at night. And after 7 p.m. or so, there was no food consumption at all until they went to bed. And then they didn't eat again for approximately 17 and a half hours. So when they looked at people in their 90s and over 100, they were fasting for 17 and a half hours after their dinner. They would have some black coffee or some espresso, but generally speaking, a 17 and a half hour fast, and then they would eat, and then they would have their dinner again, and then they would rinse, repeat. What this is doing for them is it's allowing a gut reset, so it allows that gut repair. It's also allowing them to be insulin sensitive, very good for their metabolism, very good for their mitochondria, and it's also allowing them to be in a nice caloric deficit, because we have established that, generally speaking, a caloric deficit is pretty important. There is some literature that suggests if your diet's really good, maybe it's not as important, but for the most part, a caloric deficit is important. So with this, we pivot into some rodent model research so that we can maybe enhance what we have learned from those in Abruzzo, Italy. This study was a rodent model study published in Science in 2022. It's one of the most fascinating pieces of rodent research I've ever seen. They found that when they would have mice do a 22-hour fast and a two-hour eating window, so they would eat in a block of two hours, fast for 22 hours, they would end up in about a 30% caloric reduction, so 30% calorie restriction. This led to a 10% increase in their lifespan, Heck yeah, 30% caloric deficit equals a 10% increase in their lifespan. Eating the same exact amount of calories, if they allocated the timing of the food with these mice to align with their circadian rhythm, meaning they had them eat during daylight hours and at the same time every day in that small block and not at night, that same 30% caloric deficit led to a 35% increase in lifespan. Same calories, same deficit, just pivoting the timing of the fast led to that much more of an increase in lifespan. So front loading your food seems to be one of the most important things that you could do. There's also newer literature published in cell reports that you can consume basically as much protein as you want in one sitting, and it's just going to continue to digest. It's not going to get wasted. So this means eating a nice giant breakfast with a ton of protein and then fasting for a long part of the day could be one of the most beneficial things you do for your sleep, for your circadian biology, and potentially for lifespan. Lastly, we have to talk about something that used to be thought as something only for the rich and famous or people that lived in Finland. And that's going to be a sauna. You don't need a sauna anymore. When I just sat down with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, we talked quite extensively about hot water immersion, taking hot baths, and how it activates the same processes that sitting in a sauna does. Sauna might be more leisurely, might be a little more fun, might be more social. Like a lot of people don't sit in baths together with other people, and they commonly do that in saunas, but the benefits are still very similar. So there's a study published in JAMA that was done on the Finnish people. They found that sitting in a sauna two to three times per week led to a 22% reduction in cardiovascular disease risk. Whereas if they sat in a sauna three or four, excuse me, to seven days per week, that led to a 63% decreased risk in cardiovascular disease. And it all has to do with, once again, the heat shock proteins. So remember how we talked about autophagy and cellular cleanup? The heat shock proteins basically make that process more efficient. So just to recap, Exercise, obviously very important. The types of foods, the types of nutrition you get in, the micronutrients, all those matter. But adding coenzyme Q10, adding NMN, adding ginger, adding black pepper, sitting in a sauna and front loading your meals are probably the biggest levers you can pull outside of exercise. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.